welcome friends to my youtube channel on my last lecture i have uh, showed the relation y equals to 3j to 1 minus 2 sigma relation between young's modulus buck modulus and poisson's ratio in today's lecture i shall going to discuss another relation that is y this is equals to 2 eta into 1 plus sigma Okay. So the method is almost similar. We take a unit cube. Okay. We take a unit cube whose sides coincides with the coordinate axis. Okay. So we take a unit cube whose sides coincides with the three coordinate axis. Okay. This is x, this is y, and this is z. Now, we take a unit cube. Okay. So, here in this case, suppose the tensile force per unit area P acts along x axis outward. Okay. Okay. Tensile force per unit area P acts along x axis. That means along x axis, tensile force per unit area P acts along outward, acts along outward direction. Okay. So, similarly, along y-axis, we will take an another force, but it is compressive. That means the similar amount of compressive force acts along y-axis. Okay. So, along y-axis, same amount compressive force. acts why compressive because it acts along inward direction that's why this force is compressive that means we apply a tensile force per unit area p along x direction in outward direction and along y axis we apply same amount of compressive force so uh, along z axis we will apply nothing so that means these two equal and opposite forces will have an impact on three axis so what will be the strength along three axis okay so this is x if you take y and if you take z so along x axis we apply a tensile force per unit area so we know that young's modulus is stress by strain say strain is e so e is how much that is p by y so due to the tensile force there will be an extension along x axis and that is simply p by y and that force due to that force a compression takes place along y and z axis that is simply minus sigma p by y okay okay now if we come into y axis then here the compressive force per unit area p acts so here e will be minus p y since it is a compression so minus p by y okay along y axis okay so <coughs> if minus p by y amount of force acts along y axis then corresponding x and z axis there will be a extension and that is simply sigma p by y okay this so what will be the net amount of extension or contraction along three axis okay what will be the net amount of extension and contraction along three axis so extension along x axis this is simply 
P by Y plus sigma P by Y. That means if we take P by Y common, that is 1 plus sigma. So contraction along Y axis. Contraction along Y axis. Simply minus P by Y minus sigma P by Y. Okay, if we take minus P by Y common, this is simply 1 plus sigma. So what will be the net strain along Z axis? It is simply 0 because one term is sigma P by Y, another is minus sigma P by Y. So the net effect is 0. Okay due to these forces so this is the impact of three forces uh, two forces along um, three axes two equal and opposite forces so we see there is a equal amount of elongation and contraction takes place at right angles to each other because x and y are perpendicular okay so equal extension and contraction takes place along two perpendicular directions okay and what is um, uh, equal amount and uh, <coughs> okay and this phenomena is equivalent to a shear in x y plane okay this can be treated as a shear in x y plane okay because we know that a shear is equivalent to a compression and an equal amount of extension at right angles to each other okay that we know okay this can be treated as an equivalent shear in xy plane okay because we know that a shear is equivalent to a compression and an equal amount of extension at right angles to each other okay and we know the formula that is shearing strain theta this equals to 2 into e okay here what is e the magnitude of e is this along x axis this is plus and along y axis this is minus so the magnitude of e is this and what is this is shearing strain this is shearing strain and what is shearing stress what is we apply a force p per unit area so this is the shearing stress so what will be my rigidity modulus shearing stress by shearing strain so p this is simply 2 p by y 1 plus sigma p p cancels so from which we can write y this equals to 2 eta 1 plus sigma okay so this is how the formula comes okay the by considering the shear in that plane in which uh, equal amount of extension and contraction takes place okay so this is how this relation comes okay so let us do two other relations okay that are very easy so first relation that we obtained is this y equals to 3 gain to 1 minus 2 sigma and y this equals to 2 eta into 1 plus sigma so both are equal so 3k into 1 minus 2 sigma this equals to 2 eta into 1 plus sigma okay so simply multiply 3k minus 6k sigma this equals to 2 eta plus 2 eta sigma okay so if we take sigma common then it will be 6k plus 2 eta and this is simply 3k minus 2 eta okay so what would be my sigma simply 3k minus 2 eta by 
6k plus 2 meter. So this is an another relation. Okay, this is an another relation that is sigma this equals to 3k minus 2 meter by 6k plus 2 meter. Okay, now by making by making we must make these two equations equal. Okay, so we can conclude an another relation. From first relation, we can write y by 3k, this equals to 1 minus 2 sigma. And from second relation, we can write y by eta, this equals to 2 plus 2 sigma. So if we add them, so what we get? 1 by 3k plus 1 by eta, this equals to 3. Okay. So this is what? this okay so what will be my y 9 into eta k by so this is an another relation so in today's lecture i shall discuss the various relations between elastic constants okay and how they come okay that i discussed so in my next lecture i shall going to discuss few other issues related to elastic constants okay so dear guys if you don't subscribe my channel then kindly subscribe it and the video link will be given in the description box okay if you have any query then just write it in comment section okay thank you